readers, I'm going to read day two of The One and Only Ivan by Catherine Applegate. We left off at, the animal is supposed to be me, but the artist made a mistake. I am never angry. That's where we left off. Anger is precious. A silverback uses anger to maintain order and warn his troop of danger. When my father beat his chest, it was to say, beware, listen, I am in charge. I am angry to protect you because that is what I was born to do. Here in my domain, there is no one to protect. My neighbors here at the Big Top Mall know many tricks. They are an educated lot, more accomplished than I am. One of my neighbors plays baseball, although she is a chicken. Another drives a fire truck, although he's a rabbit. I used to have a neighbor, a sleek and thoughtful seal, who could balance a ball on her nose from dawn till dusk. Her voice was like the throaty bark of a dog, chained outside on a cold night. Children wished on pennies and tossed them into her plastic pool. They glowed on the bottom like flat copper stones. The seal was hungry one day, or bored perhaps, so she ate 100 pennies. Mac said she'd be fine. He was mistaken. Mac calls our show the littlest big top on the earth. Every day at two, four, and seven, humans fan themselves, drink sodas, applaud, babies wail, Mac dressed like a clown, pedals on a tiny bike. A dog named Snickers rides on Stella's back. Stella sits on a stool. It is a very sturdy stool. I don't do any tricks. Max says it's enough for me to be me. Stella told me that some circuses move from town to town. They have humans who dangle on ropes, twining from the tops of the tent. They have grumbling lions with gleaming teeth and a snaking lion of and a snaking line of elephants, each clutching the limp tail in front of her. The elephants look far off into the distance so they won't see the humans who want to see them. The circus doesn't migrate. We sit where we are, like an old beast too tired to push on. After our show, humans forage through the stores. A store is where humans buy things they need to survive. At Big Top Mall, some stores sell new things, things like balloons and t-shirts and caps to cover the gleaming heads of humans. Some stores sell old things, things that smell dusty and damp and long forgotten. All day, I watch humans scurry from store to store. They pass their green paper, dry as old leaves, and smelling a thousand hands back and forth and back and forth. They hunt frantically, stalking, pushing, grumbling. Then they leave, clutching bags filled with things, bright things, soft things, big things. But no matter how full the bags, they always come back for more. Humans are clever indeed. They spin pink clouds. You can eat them. They build domains with flat waterfalls, but they are lousy hunters. Some animals live privately, unwatched, but that is not my life. My life is flashing lights and pointing fingers and uninvited visitors. Inches away, humans flatten their little hands against the walls of glass that separate us. The glass says, you are this, and we are that, and that is how it will always be. Humans leave their fingerprints behind, sticky with candy, slick with wet. Each night, a weary man comes to wipe them away. Sometimes I press my nose against the glass. My nose print, like your fingerprint, is the first and last and only one. The man wipes the glass, and then I am gone. Here in my domain, I do not have much to do. You can only throw so many balls at humans before you get bored. For some reason, my visitors never seem to carry anything with them. In my domain, I have a tire swing, a baseball, a tiny plastic pool filled with dirty water, and even an old TV. I have a stuffed toy gorilla too. Julia, the daughter of the weary man who cleans the mall each night, gave it to me. The gorilla 
has empty eyes and floppy limbs, but I sleep with it every night. I call it not Tag. Tag was my twin sister's name. Julia is 10 years old. She has hair like black glass and a wide half moon smile. She and I have a lot in common. We are both great apes and we are both artists. It was Julia who gave me my first crayon, a stubby blue one, slipped through the broken spot in the glass along with a folded piece of paper. I knew what to do with it. I'd watch Julia draw. When I dragged the, the crayon across the paper, it left a trail in its wake like a slithering blue snake. Julia's drawings are wild with color and movement. She draws things that aren't real, clouds that smile and cars that swim. She draws until her crayons break and her paper rips. Her pictures are like pieces of a dream. I can't draw dreamy pictures. I never remember my dreams. Although I sometimes awaken with my fists clenched and my heart hammering. Hi third graders.